Good afternoon. Today is April 29th, Saturday, April 29th, 1995. And Mrs. Nancy Catherine Clark is going to talk to us today about the family albums that uh, Loan and she have been putting together for last year. These are these albums here, and this one here, another one here that Loan has, and also a third one. Well, actually, there are something like 11 or 12 all told, aren't there? Yeah. Albums, are there? Yes. All oh, right. Well, we were a big family, and we did go back a long way. Okay. This, this family album depicts the family as far back as we could go in Australia and a bit beyond the period of that, but that is only from records. Now, the Clark family album, I've given both titles as the main photographs and families depicted on Mrs. Cla my side of the family. This is an interesting trait of the Wheeler Billston family trees. I think there are many reasons. Firstly, today in Australia, we like to trace back to a genuine first fleeter. Firstly, in Australia, we like to trace back to, um, I'm sorry, to, secondly, Nancy Clark's father died when she was very young, so it was on her mother's side that provided most of the family stories. And thirdly, it is that family which easily traces back to an obvious patriarch. Uh, though we will never, he was never was one. And the fourthly, within the Clark family itself which has continued, perhaps accelerated by a slight lack of interest on the part of Cal Clark's own family to pursue history. If indeed there was a singular trait of the Hardy Bilston Wheeler group, it is the desire to record the past, honour past generations to, uh, to remember. There are many historians of the family. Unfortunately, there is an equal tendency to be daunted, and this find a maze, a hard one to work through, and leave the various works unfinished. Many of the photos here actually come from the unfinished collections by Nancy, Auntie Ann, Uncle Ward, Nana, Frieda, and mainly Cherry Cameron. She was the one. It is a fact that it is in all their albums that gives the depth and the breadth to make it live beyond the dubious interesting interests of facing, tracing family trees. There are many different perspectives available and there is a history back to the first fleeters, the pioneer stories, the drift to the cities, the sorrow of early and premature deaths, wars and peace, but there are individual stories to follow too. As to perspective, there is, better, there is a permanent a personal point of view which will mainly be Nancy's. So many people from different parts of the family tree, specific and general, may have had interests here. As to the Clark boys, they must remember that they can choose their heritage and look to their father's side too. But that is one area that needs further research. The Hardy line is poorly understood and to the Wheeler line itself. Researching the origins of all these lines in the UK will reward anyone who undertakes it. Thomas Bilston was born. Thomas Bilston was born in Birmingham on the 27th of March, 1808. Birmingham, at that time, was becoming a prosperous industrial city in the Midlands, in Warwickshire, now in the country of the West Midlands, um, 
see a text booklet about Birmingham. His mother kept an ironmonger shop, so perhaps his father had died early. He probably came from a middle class background. This is indicated by the fact that he was tried for either stealing or forging promissory notes in ch checks. He covered over his convict beginnings, but there will be some truth in the fact of his stories. He may well have had quite some money by the time his sentence was done and he arrived in Victoria. His aunt, Aunt Preston, left him money and his father-in-law, Wheeler, probably helped out too. So by the time he arrived in Victoria, very soon after the first colonists, he had the ability and the wherewithal to soon do well. There are, there are photographs here. You can tell us about the photos now. There are three photos on this page. And the first is the crest of the city of Bur Bilston, a town near Birmingham, now swallowed up by it. That's the crest. And this is a picture of Aunt Preston. Aunt Preston was the sister of Thomas Bil Bilston Senior. So this is Aunt Preston, yes? That's Aunt Preston. She's the one that left him some money. And that is Miss Preston, the niece of Thomas Bilston in Birmingham. Um, Thomas Bilston Senior, I should say. And they shared money. And this picture, he arri Tom arrived in Melbourne on June the 6th, 1838, from Hobart and managed various runs until moving to Western Australia where he took up land. Oh, well, that's a June the 6th coming up again, isn't it, Mrs Clark? Your birthday? My birthday. He died on June the 6th, which is odd too. So uh, June the 6th keeps bobbing up. He arrived with his wife Anne, whose father was Thomas Wheeler and captain, uh, he was sea captain and his mother was Elizabeth Gay, the daughter of a first fleeter. They married in Norfolk. That's fine, it's coming up now. I've set the photos up so that they're getting a better uh, image on there. Can I have a look at what you're getting? Oh, that's fine. Thank you. And this reads Fidelitate et Industria Stat Bilstonia. So that's to the faith and the industry of the state of Bilstonia, of the town of Bilston. Yes, and this first lady was? The first lady was Aunt Preston, who was Thomas Bilston Senior's sister. And she left young Thomas some money to be shared with her other niece. Who's this other photo, was it? Yes. And what's her name? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's this man standing up? Oh, yes. Tom Bilston standing and Uncle Fred sitting on the... Uh, or to, to his left. Right. To, our, no, to his left and our right as we're viewing it. Now, and below is Tom Bilston's... That's his grave. grave. We took the family on a trip up into the Western District and we came across that grave of Uncle of Grandpa Tom and his wife Anne. It had been mutilated but it had been fixed up at one stage by his children around about 1923 and that's how we were able to distinguish it. But someone has been back since to that grave 
and found that the whole complete headstone has been stolen now. Right. That reads, in loving memory of Anne, Miss Belo the beloved wife, Thomas Bilston, fell asleep November 11th, 1877, aged 39. Thomas Bilston also fell asleep June 6th, 1893, aged 92. Peace. Very poor photographs. We've got Anne Bilston, the wheeler at the top. And Tom with his two daughters, Mary Ann. To Mary Ann and Maria Elizabeth. Maria went to Western Australia and became the grandmother of Alexander Stone, the senator. Oh, yourself, the now. the names of the children. This is a photo of one of the chil children of, of uh, which? Thomas and Anne. Of Thomas and Anne. Thomas and Anne had 11 children. William Bilston, born on the 30th of the 8th, 1836. George Yarra Wilston, born at Yarra Yarra, Victoria, on the 10th of the 8th, 1838. Mary Ann Wilston, born on the 18th of the 9th, 1840. And Thomas Edward Wilston, born on the 13th of the 2nd, 1842. Maria Elizabeth Wilston, born on the 26th of the 11th, 1844. Henry Morris Bilston, born on the 24th of the 11th, 1846. And Frederick William Bilston, born on the 5th of the 11th, 1849. And Charlotte Robin B Rubina Bilston, born on the 26th of the 11th, 1851. Oh, golly, there's a lot born in November. Uh, Alexander Hayward Bilston, born on the 18th of the 3rd, 1854. Alexander Hayward Bilston, on the 28th of the 3rd, 1854. Sarah Frances Ellen Ives Bilston, born on the 23rd of the 9th, 1856. And Amelia Jane Bilston, born on the 19th of the 11th, 1860. Photograph, daughter of Thomas, probably either Mary Ann or Maria Elizabeth, was born in Tasmania and his name is deleted now, so we think that he must have died early. Is that William? That's William the eldest. This is William here. No, right. this one. The pictures now start with George II. Oh, I see. They start with George. The first child born in Victoria. Right. We think William died. Right. We think that William died in Tasmania, and um, George was then the first one who was to have been born in Victoria, and he also appears to be the first child born in Victoria. His name is George Yarra because he was born on the banks of the Yarra, and the natives badly wanted her to call him George Yarra, and that's how his name became and those pictures are of him he was a rather handsome lad too I don't know what the bottom one is oh that's his his grave now do you want the next bit on the um Headstone for George Yarra it reads, In proud memory of George Yarra Bilston, born Yarra, Yarra, Victoria, Vic in 1837, died Katanning, 19, 1915. It's Katanning, Western Australia, because he went to Western Australia. Pioneer in Western Australia and South West, Victor West Australia. Loved husband of Alan Aug Augustine, died Victoria, 19, 1877. 
as she died earlier. Pioneer at rest, Stanley Sinclair Bilston, 1898-1977. Must be somebody else there as well. And that's what's written down there. Well, that's then George Yarra's son, that next one, and his pen. Oh, no, those are both George Yarra. George Yarra's son and his wife and family. Um, and George Yarra's son was born in 1860 and lived till 1935. George Yarra's grandchildren are Georgina Ellen Bilston, married name Widdicombe, and Edna Margaret Bilston. In the bottom left are the grandchildren of George Yarrow's grandchildren. And um, so one of these grandchildren went to New Zealand, okay. Yeah. The next two. Uh, Mm. Well, we have pictures of him? Yes, here. Oh, this one here. Oh. Well, yeah, this right? is the ninth child, the one standing. Ninth child of oh. George Gerald. Oh. George Gerald. He was the first. Um, his name is uh, no, Ulysses. No, you can continue on. It's recording. And uh, his name is Ulysses Ives Bilston. Um, I know that my aunt used to. This is China. How, how the business the belongs in the room. Oh, well, that's the way for time. Everybody's going for time. Mm. They got the property. Didn't get so late. Now that our guests have uh, departed, um, left the flat, we're going to continue. And we have uh, these three photos. And the man at the top was Mr. Ulysses. Ulysses. Ives Bilston. The ninth child of George Yarra Bilston and Ellen Augustina Ellicott became a poet writing virtues such as this dedicated to Auntie Kate who lived at the Wattle Glen Farms farm until 1918. And the bottom left was Leo and Arlene Stevens, 1901 to 1963. And the bottom right was George Bilston, um, 1898, and the 1976 photograph taken on the 13th of the 9th, 1918. Oh, right. Oh, he lived from 19, 1898 to 1976, and the photograph was taken on the 3rd 13th of the 19th of 9th 1918. So he obviously was at war, went to the First World War. Yes. When he became a sergeant with three stripes. Yes. Okay. Do we know anything about him in the war? No. No. Written in the Red Book. Should I have that out too? I don't know. Yep, the fifth child. Of Tom and Anne Bilston was Maria Elizabeth Bilston. And she was born on the 26th of the 11th, and she died, uh, 26th of the 11th, 1844, and she died on the 30th of the 7th, 1909. And she married David Blair Stone on the 10th of the 10th, 1860, and they had 11 children. From the top left, you have Maria Elizabeth Bilston, and her husband David Blair Stone, and their first child, Sam Stone, who was born on the 13th of the 3rd, 1862, and he died in 1935. And this is where the Senator Stone comes out of this Yes, line. yes. Top left, Sam Stone, our cousin Sam. Top right, Maria's and David's fifth child was Frederick Stone, born on the 24th of the 6th, 1871, at Haywood, and he died in Bunbury, WA, our cousin Frederick. 
Sadie Stone was Sam Stone's third child and she married Douglas Milton. And this is a postcard sent to dearest Auntie Kate. And bottom right, dear cousin Annie and Frank, this is a photo of myself and two girlfriends. I am the middle one. How do you like me with my hair up? I don't always have it, ahead, have it up, but the girls wanted me to for the occasion, and I did. I'm 19, and Mama thinks it is time I had it up, but I don't think so. Do you? Well, dear cousins, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Much love from Sadie. Now, I remember cousin Sadie. She came to visit us when I was a little girl. She was a great mate of my mother's, probably around about the same age. And she, she visited us. Now, we've got some more photographs. Top left was David Blair Stone, Jr. and his sister, Sadie Maria Stone. 1895 to 1980. Third child of Sam Stone and Jean, Nee Allen. Sadie was also a great friend of Nancy's mother, my mother. David Blair Stone Jr., um, 1901 to 19, no, 1891 to 1972, and was the first child of Sam Stone and Jean, Nee Allen. Um, and the next one was B David Blair Stone Jr. and his sister Sadie Maria Stone, the third child of Sam Stone and Jean, Nee Allen. And the bottom right, Charlie Allen Stone, the second child of Sam Stone and Jean, Nee Allen. And he's in uniform as well. Hmm? He's in uniform as well. Hello. Yes, well, I don't know him, but I did know the next page. Yep. Photographs. Top. Yeah, it's this one, isn't it? Sam Stone's family. Back row, Charlie, Blair, Sadie and Norma. Front row, Freddie, Papa, Emily and Nana. So that's who that is, Charles yes. Stone's family. Good photographs. Linda Jane Stone, 1873, aged 15 years and five months. Nancy remembers Linda coming to stay with her family at Williams Road and she was about her mother's age and they loved going to the races and enjoying themselves. Yes, I remember quite clearly them going to the races, etc. And bottom left is a postcard, Linda, Linda aged 10 years and Cecilia aged one year, uh, both of John Stone's family of Bunbury, Western Australia. Linda was the sixth child of M.E. Bilston and husband D.B. Stone. That's, um, I can't think of M.E. Bilston. Right, and the other photo, the last one? Oh, that's right, Ma Maria Elizabeth and husband David Blair Stone and the bottom right was Beryl Stone aged four, four years and Lorraine Stone aged eight months, the daughters of David Blair and Maria Elizabeth Stone near Bilston. Took that photo. Now who's this? Alex Stone? That's Alex Stone. I think he is the grandfather but he may be the father of John Stone so. in 40, maybe a little later. So mm. Mum took this one about 1940. And who is it of? The it's very of painted. Um, Alex Stone and my mother and my aunt, oh, Auntie right. Anne. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is the sixth son of Tom and Anne Bilston. And his name is John Henry Morris Bilston. And he was born in 1846 and lived till 1917. And the photographs of John Henry Morris Bilston. And the bottom one is John Henry Morris Bilston.
Now we have Frederick William Belston, born 1849 and lived till 1935, the son of Thomas. And the photographs are of Frederick William Belston, Thomas Henry Belston, uh, 1893 to 1964, first child of Frederick and William, Frederick William and Elizabeth Wilson, and Mary Ann. Uh, in the next picture, Mary Ann, she was known as Birdie Wilson, um, 1897 to 18, 1983, and Amy, Amy was born in 1895. I don't know when she died. And they were the daughters of Frederick William and Elizabeth Bilston. And the bottom right is Elizabeth Linda Bilston, the daughter of Frederick William and Elizabeth Bilston. We have this next lot is Thomas Henry Bilston, the first child of Frederick William and Elizabeth Bilston. And the bottom is John Wheeler, who's known as Dick Bilston. Uh, at Wando Vale, the son of Frederick William and Elizabeth Bilston. Auntie Katie visited them not long before she died in 1964. Um, that's Wando Vale, is uh, one of the old stations we had in the Western District. That's right. Along with Nareen and all the others. Yes, old family homes. So we built Nareen before. Mr. Fraser got us. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, he didn't know. Noreen was no, known as Bilston Springs, and there's still a Bilston Springs up there, isn't there? Well, there should be on the property somewhere. Yeah. Is the old Bilston tree on it? A great big. No. Oak. No? The so Bilston no. tree wasn't there. It was elsewhere. Oh, right, okay. I have to take you up there one day, Tony, and let you look at everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about the girls. Now this is three of Tom and Anne's daughters. Maria Elizabeth Bilston, her married name was Stone, but you've seen her before, moved to Western Australia standing. By coincidence, she and her husband had the same wedding anniversary as Cal and Nancy Clark, and she became the great-grandmother of Senator Stone. So they're, they're the ones who married on the 10th of October, 1880. That's right. 80 years to the day before Cal and I got married. Yeah. Okay. And Sarah Frances Bilston, her na married name was MacArthur, 1856 to 1930, and she moved to New Zealand. <coughs> and another photograph of the three old aunts with Mary Ann Campbell, Sarah Frances Ellen Ives MacArthur, and Amelia Jane Emmy Blackwood standing. The photograph was taken in New Zealand on the 1st of August 1910. So they were getting on a little in age. The My mo mother said that the old aunts, when they came back to visit, were very bright and sprightly, sprightly, and they used to wear rouge. They had red paper that they dampened and put on their cheeks to make themselves look smart and pretty, whereas the ones left behind in Australia were just plain, probably sunburned. This is after being in New Zealand for some time. Older. Start now. Just a couple more of the old aunts when they got older, yes. Sarah Frances Ellen Ives Bilston, married name MacArthur, and Amelia Jane Emmy Bilston, married name Blackwood. The third child of Thomas and Anne Bilston was born on the 16th of the 9th, 1840, and her name was. Uh, Married name rather was Norm, Mrs. Norman Stewart Campbell. Just a second. Mary Ann Bilston, married name Campbell, on this one, yeah. 
Norman Stewart Campbell, uh, the photographer, uh, or oh, the photographer's name. No, no, there's a man there that might be Norman Stewart. That's Norman Stewart Campbell. And the bottom is Mary Ann Bilston, photo taken about 1901. Age 61. Age 61 by then. Right. And I see the photo of Norman Stewart Campbell was taken by Hart Campbell of Tay Street in Fakagil, New Zealand. So they were down the South Island. So that's why. Oh, well, we're coming to our grandfather shortly. But we've come to the eleventh child at the moment. Oh, yes, but see, most of the book is about them, yeah. our, our, our family. So we're yeah. just researching these very early pioneers of our families, because they're after the Hardy families as well, aren't they? Yes. Well, the Hardy family gets a little muddled up with them. <laughs> All right, so who, who the eleventh uh, child of Tom and Ann Bilston was Amelia Jane Bilston, and she was born on the nineteenth of the eleventh, eighteen sixty, and married Thomas Blackwood. Amelia Jane Emmy Bilston married named Blackwood at the age of twenty two when this photo was taken. Uh, it's just one over here. Um and the top Right was Jane, Amelia Jane Emmy Bilston, 1960, the same person. And bottom right, at their daughter's wedding, Kitty bottom McKay, Sergeant. Wilfred Johnson, groom, and his brother, and another person named Thomas Blackwood. That's brother in law. And Amelia Jane, Emmy Blackwood, near Dustin. It appears the girls went over, yep. To live with their eldest sister, and they married in New Zealand. And she's the oldest of them. And she looked after them and mar married them off, I suppose. Oh. Is that a daughter? All right, here's Tom, Emmy and Annie, their daughter, known as Welly. Tom, Emmy and Annie and their daughter, known as Welly. Oh, I don't know much about them. Okay. She's known as Welly because her grandfather was Wheeler. Oh, right. Okay. Mm. The other one had to be Blackwoods. The three of them. And here's a photograph of Annie Wheeler, Wellie Blackwood. And her name was Wheeler Blackwood, and she was known as Wellie. Um, and she was the daughter of Tom and Amelia Jane Blackwood, Nee Bilston. While Wellie was sent to the United Kingdom to be educated, on the way, when the ship was in Sydney, she absconded and the captain, in whose charge she was, um, to go to the, over to England, was when he found her, he put her under lock and key until her mother joined the, the boat. She was a, a wild one, but a very pretty wild one, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> and who's in the bottom first? Huh? The, the photo on the next one was Amelia Jane, Emmy Wilston, the sister, and um, the lady at the bottom was born in 1912, or well, she must have been born later. No, no, wait, wait a second, hold, hold on. So the photo at the bottom is... Uh, Amelia Jane Emmy Bilston married in Blackwood. With and of eight, she was born in 1860 and her granddaughter Emily Esfield Young Johnson born 21 11 1912. Yes. Okay, good. It's Catherine Amelia Johnston, a New Zealand cousin.
and that photo was taken on the 11th of March 1907. And this one's Lita Johnson, another cousin. She, that was taken in Melbourne, and the other one was taken in New Zealand. And we were under the impression Lita and Wally were sisters, and Mum was young. Now these three, there is no description for these, so we're not quite sure who they are. More photos of the family there. The tenth child of Tom and Anne Bilston was Sarah Frances Ellen Ives Bilston and she married Duncan MacArthur in New Zealand and she lived from 1856 to 1930. Um, the photographs show, the postcard showed Sarah Frances Ellen Ives Bilston and the top right was Sarah Ellen, Sarah Frances Ellen Ives Bilston, and the bottom was the home of Sarah and Duncan in New Zealand, daughter Norma and a visitor. This lot of photographs are, yep. Uh, the top photograph was taken in 1880 of Duncan MacArthur and Sarah and Francis Ellen Ives Nee Bilston um, with three of their children, Norma Mary, Duncan Thomas and James Frederick. Frederick. Duncan became a water chief in New Zealand. When I say a water chief, he ran the waterworks. Um, and the bottom left, another son of Duncan MacArthur and Sarah, Francis Ellen Ives Nee Bilston um, the photograph taken in the 13th of the 1st 1903 Francis Ballantyre McKitty MacArthur uh, 1884 and bottom right the photograph taken on the 15th of the 6th 1894 was Norma Mary MacArthur. Times of Alexander Hayward, this is chapter 3. Of the ten children of Thomas Bilston, Alexander Hayward was the ninth and is the ancestor of the Hardys and so the Clarks. Alexander, Alexander Hayward Bilston, 1854 to 1916, lived at the farm called Wattle Glen near Casterton which was a five bedroom house made of a section of mud brick and some wattle and daub. Old Tom himself, that's old Tom Bilston, lived there for a while, though he would have lived much of his time at the pub at Haywood. Tom became blind and probably needed some extra care in his later years. Alexander married Catherine Galena Colette MacDonald. She lived from 1849 to 1923. Her father, James, and his brother, came from Scotland and settled at Inverell in New South Wales. Then they came to Panola in Victoria, where her brother had a big property. She was educated by Mother Mary MacKillop, with whom there was a long correspondence. Catherine left Panola, came to Casterton and lived with Alexander at Wattle Glen. But they were cousins as well to uh, Mary MacKillop, weren't they? It is believed they were. Looking back at family histories, it's believed they were cousins of Mary MacKillop's. Right. Right. Now, we have the photograph here of our grandparents, and your great-grandparents to the Hardy kids. Um, top left is both Alexander and Catherine. Kate, as she's many times called. And right is Alexander Haywood Bilston. That's a picture of him as he was known as Alexander Haywood to keep him separate from many others. And the pictures of Alex and Catherine. I must say those copies are very good, Tony. Yeah. It's a pity the others weren't all copied too. Who have we got here? Uh, now get, get, get. May Allen, 
married name Leach, was May Monday's mother and the daughter of Sarah and Charles Rudolph Allen. Now Sarah was Catherine MacDonald's sister, our grandmother's sister, but she was much older than Grandma, because Grandma was the youngest. Her daughter, May Monday, was a frequent visitor to Frida Hardy's household and then to Nancy Clark's household. Uh, is the that fr one. Frida at the bottom? Yes, uh, she was She was older than me, of course, but she was a frequent visitor and she lived over in the West. And Lowen um, spent a lot of time over there and used to visit them. Oh. Uh, but their cousins on on the McDonald side, photograph of May Allen, cousin. No, right, not his first cousin. This is my mother's family. Uh, her father was Alexander Haywood. Bilston, and the, this family photo was taken at Wattle Glen. And uh, Thomas James, he lived from 1860, 84 to 1917. And the father, Alexander Haywood, lived from 1854 to 1916. Alexander Leo Wiseman, he lived from 1888 to 1969. Which one's which? Uncle Alec was that one. Alright, okay. And Annie Sarah, she lived from 1881 to 18, 1983. She lived a very long time. Oh, is that the girl right on the end, is it? This one, the eldest oh, daughter. Oh, the eldest one. Mm. And Catherine Juliana was the mum. Right. And she lived from 1849 to 1923. And Frida Charlotte lived from 1886 to 1954. And Catherine Maria lived from 1889 to 1964. Well, which one's Frida? Frida. Frida is the girl, one of those girls, I'll have to move them. yes, that's Frida. Frida, no, that's your mother. That's my mum, that's your grandmother. Yeah, no, that's the Hardy's grandmother. That's right. Yeah, okay. But the pub at uh, Woolsthorpe, is well, it? it's Mark Casterton. Casterton. Mm -hmm. And that veranda where they are had Thomas James, uh, Alexander Haywood, and Alexander Leo Wiseman, and Annie Sarah in the front row, Catherine Juliana, Frida Charlotte, and Katie Maria. All right, and down below we have. Well, the first, the top one was the scene. I've just read oh. you out the. No, the people below. Okay. Below. Right. We have here. That they are Alexander Haywood's. Was he Alexander Haywood? Not oh, here. Yeah. Alexander's children: Catherine, Maria, Auntie Kate, Annie, Auntie Annie, Frida, my mother. And Alexander, my uncle. Oh, right, okay. Yes. And down below, we have who's the uh, Alex. Left? Alex on the left. The left. And the bottom right was Annie dressed up as Boadicea. I thought it was Boadicea. Yes. Annie. <laughs> and that's. Frida. Frida mm. with her horse and buggy, and the horse's name was Hallie. And Hallie was born on the day that the comet. Hallie appeared. Oh, the Hallie's first time com round? Yes. Oh, right. And after all, we eight and I did a lot of work with the Hallie's Comet last time it came around. That's very That's interesting. Right. 
The horse was born on the day that it appeared. Oh, right. So that's why the horse was known as Halley. In 1883 or something around then, something wasn't it? Something like that. The top photo here is the new recreation centre in Hamilton and the bottom one is something to do with the war. This looks like a big gun they're carrying. It was done by a man who acted as their tutor at Wattle Glen. Yes. It's the watercolour of the house at Wattle Glen. That's right. In Watercolour of the House at Water Glen, painted by the English governess M. Moody in 1923. But she said it's a man, so it must have been... Um, it was a man. Right. Well, Lauren's a bit wrong there. Well, Lauren gets a bit wrong about a lot of things. Then he's only working by hearsay a lot of the time. That's Lauren Jr. Yes. It's yeah, Auntie yeah. Anne as a young girl, then later as a married woman. That's right. I thought anyway. I didn't know Auntie Anne got married. Did she get married? She was Annie Bettsworth. Oh, that's right, Annie Bettsworth. Married. She's about ten. Perhaps on the back of it. Oh, this one here. Annie. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's Aunt Annie. Mm -hmm. But Aunt Annie and Uncle Frank. Auntie Annie and Uncle Frank were very good to us children. They took us to many places that we would never have got to. Picnics and camping and all those sort of things that we as children would never have got because our father died so young. And for that we are very grateful. Okay, now who's this here in this picture? This picture is Thomas Bettsworth, who was Uncle Frank's father. Oh, right, okay. Came from Adelaide. Okay. Photograph of Frank Bettsworth and Bettsworth and Thomas. Thomas who? Thomas was Frank's father. Oh, right, whom we just saw before. Yeah, Lee Bilson in the bottom one. Three and Grandma Bilson, Katie Bilson in the bottom one. Bilson in the bottom one. And Grandma Bilson, Katie Bilson, the bottom, and Annie and Frank at the top. Run, Cal. Chapter 4 The Hardy Family in Casterton. You going to read that? Alright. Of the children of Alexander Haywood Bil Bilston, Frida was the mother of Nancy and Lowen Clem Ward as well. And she married Victor Hardy, and they lived at Casterton in a house called Exeter, and on a farm called Inverell, which Victor owned, and Uncle Frank managed with his wife Annie Bilston, Bilston nee Bil Annie Bettsworth, nee Bilston. And wasn't there another child as well, a young child who died when it was about two or something? Oh yes, it was Jimmy. Jimmy. And there was another one, but he didn't have a name. Oh, right, okay. Okay. These are three photographs of Casterton. Casterton from the east in 1898, Old and New Bridges from the east, 1898, and Casterton River in flood on July 22nd, 1906. was Clement Victor Hardy and he died at Exeter, Casterton, November the 22nd, 1922, aged 38. And that was taken when he was about 30 years old. And this is Frieda Bilston's husband and the father of Lowen, Clement, Ward and Nancy. And he came from Adelaide at the bequest of Frank Bettsworth to whom he was related. He, uncle Frank was his uncle, he, his, my father's uncle, and there he met Frieda. Family law says he came without a penny, but this may be because he loaned his last ten pounds to Frank, whom he met on the road. 
He prob Uncle Frank was droving sheep at the time. He probably came from an equally well-to-do family in our day, as Frank Bedsworth was the governor, was the nephew of Governor Hindmarsh, and his sister Thel Thelma carried that name. He worked as, as an accountant and soon owned property, certainly enough for his family to be without too much hardship after he died at a very early age. And that was your grandfather. An early colour photo. <laughs> well, pretending to be. Grandpa Hardy. That's Grandpa Hardy, my father's father. I met him when I was about 10 years of age and he and I had a lovely time in Melbourne. We went to all the pictures and my mother used to take him to the cricket which was on at the time and he thoroughly enjoyed himself. Did he come out from England or something? Or over no, he came over from Adelaide and he stayed oh. with his daughter-in-law and grandchildren whom he hadn't really known, not for many, many years. Oh, that's great. Well, when was that that he came over? Have to be about 1930. Oh, right. Okay. So mum was 10 years of age at that stage and doesn't really know whether it was um, grandfather taking her or the other way around. Um, now what's this say here? On this? To dear uncle. I'll have to have a look at it. To dear Uncle Frank and Auntie Annie, wishing you the compliments of the season from Clifford. Ah, well, yes. I suppose at this point it would be a good time to explain uh, how this relationship came about. Uncle Frank was the sister, no, the, the brother of my grandfather's first wife. So therefore, no, the second wife. The first wife was Miss Lowen. That's how Lowen got his name, because my father's mother was Miss Lowen. Thara Lowen was her name. And when she died at a very early age, she was only 29 when she died, Grandpa married again. He needed someone to look after the four little boys he had. Oh, right. So he married Uncle Frank's sister. I can't tell you what her name was. I just don't think I ever heard it. And um, therefore, the next lot of children of Clifford of Clifford was one, and Thelma, and there was one more. I think there were three, two boys and a girl in the next family. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to get to them. And we'll get to them in a minute. This, these two pictures that you've got here are Victor Hardy, um, two pictures of him, one with a hat on and one with a hat off, and Nana is a young girl, right. Frida. This is Clifford Hardy, that's, right, so this is a half-brother for, uh, for Victor, for Clement Victor, yes, okay, and he's in a uniform then? Yes, he went to that war. They were badly gassed during that war and he suffered for many years after. Oh, right. So it was in France somewhere? Yeah. Does he have descendants? Yes. No. I don't know that it will, if it tells us. Frida Hardy, May 1923, Frida Bilston and Fred, Frida Hardy. Well, she must have been married. Well, she was certainly married then, but she wasn't there. Oh, and that's the white possum. Oh, right. 
Wait a second. Zero back in on that. So we've got Frida Hardy, the top left. Frida Hardy in. Yeah, Frida Hardy, May 1923, up here. Frida Bilston over here with the white possum. Note, the white yes, possum the here. White possum. And Frida Hardy here. So, how come it's Frida Bilston? They're different people, are they? they must be. No, they're the same person. Oh, same person. She was Frida Bilston and then she There's became Frida, Frida Hardy. Hardy. She's looking very sad there. Right. Because that was after the death of her father. Oh, right, okay. That's why she looks so dreadful at that stage. With the yeah. names. Oh, well, the names here are yeah. Auntie Kate, Jim Ferrier, Mother and Daddy, and the house at Caston. Or well, we think it's the house at Caston. The mum thinks it, the, the wood was a bit darker, but I think uh, on the photos it probably is the right one. It's Clifford Hardy again. Grandfather's young brother. Yeah. Good age young brother. So it's taken at the hotel in the Woolsthorpe that Uncle Alec owned. And in the picture are Alex Wilson and Charles Cameron. Charles Cameron was Auntie Kate's husband. And the middle was Alexander Bilston and Francis Bettsworth, Uncle Frank, and Charles Edward Cameron acting the fool. Yeah. I don't know which one it was. And the bottom was Alexander Bilston and three of his children, Molly, Alex known as Boy, and Lexi, and Charles and Katie Cameron, Nee Bilston. Well Lexi's still with us. Lexi's and Boy's still with us, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't yeah. Oh. Private Clifford Hardy number. 5108. That must have been his number going to the war, but I didn't know that he was really a, In a Scotch, Scotch uniform. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Dear Frieda and Victor, this is a photo of a Scotch pal of mine whom I met while on my furlough in Edinburgh, Scotland. I have a faint idea you might know him, your affectionate brother Clifford. <laughs> Oh, right, so that's good. And the top right is Frida Hardy in 1907. And the bottom is Thelma Hardy, Victor's stepsister. But that's not right, it's Victor's half sister. The stepsister, I think, is when it's another mother, etc. That's right. Yeah. But it's just a half sister because they had the same father. Yeah. That's the stepsister would be by adoption. Well, not by adoption, but. Yeah, by a, a man. We've reached the second album now. It's growing up in Melbourne. The drift to Melbourne. After the untimely death of Victor Hardy, Frida took her children to Melbourne. She bought a large house in Williams Road, Turak, and though she often rented it out while she moved from suburb to suburb, the house remained in the family till after Frida's death in 1953. The other sisters, Anne and Kate, followed in the drift to Melbourne, although they stayed in Casterton for a few years. Nancy remembers the trips to the family farm in Burrell, which Frank and Anne continued to manage. So the drift to Melbourne was in the dates of there from 1923 to 1930, so it took around seven years for everyone to move down. Yeah. The photograph, the first one on the left, You've got Clem, Lowen, Ward, Nancy and Mother. Now I must tell you a little story about that picture. My mother used to be a great friend of Damien Pera's mother and they used to play cards together. So Damien at the time was a budding photographer. So the mother asked us, could we take, she take the photograph? Or rather he take the photograph of the family. So he came out to our house in Malvern at the time and lined us up on the veranda there, as you can see. And we're sitting there and I'm twiddling my thumbs all day me and got everything ready. And he took the photo. But when we saw it, Mother would not order any more because there was I sitting twiddling my thumbs. 
and the great photographer Damien Pera was the author of that picture. And he became very, very famous later. But he was only about 18 at the time too. Mm. All right, now the other, mm. next one. The next one is Clem. Is it Clem? Yes. And middle left is, just to see. Oh, it's still Clem on the bike. And the next one, middle right, we've got Frida, Ward, Nancy and Kate Bilston, her sister. And at the bottom we've got Ward, Lowen and Clem. And which one's Lowen? Lowen the is the one in the middle. Lo what, Lowen's the tall one? Well, I mean, take a look at Clem, he was only in short pants or oh, little right. knickerbockers at the time. I mean, there was a time when Lowen was the oldest, the biggest. Oh, that's right. Lowen was the oldest in the family, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Right. We've got Frida, Hardy, that's Clem. Top left, yeah. Okay. What have we got there? The top little one. Yeah, I'll, I'll run through it if you know. It's oh, that's right. Frida, Hardy and Friends of Buffalo. Uh, October 1925, um, top right. I stood and perished while Jean was trying to snap every few strides. He got down like this, Frida, October 1925. Well, Lowen and Nancy Hardy Hattie, about? About 1928 at the back gate at Williams Road. Frida Hardy and Jean Lee taken on Bright Suspension Bridge, October 1925. Bottom left, Ronald Cameron. And bottom right, Tim McCoy. Frank McCoy his name was, but he was always known as Tim McCoy. Oh, right. So that's you and Lowen there in that big photo. Yes. Um, top left, Frida Hardy, Clem Hardy, Katie Cameron, Lowen Hardy, Annie Bettsworth, Nancy Hardy, and Cherry Cameron at Williams Road, Turak. 1929. 1929. Yeah. Would I have been nine years old there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Cherry was born by then. Um, top right, the, the same. same. And middle left, Frida Hardy, July 1924. Yep. Middle right, Les and May and Bob Hardy, aged 13 years, and Mac, two weeks. Now, Bob Hardy was a, a sailor, and he was killed during the last war, or the Second World War. He was on a ship that was sunk in the Indian Ocean. Do you know what that big ship's name was? No, I don't. I think they were talking about it recently. Yeah, they were, but I just can't think. Um, and bottom left, we've got Thelma Hardy and her husband, Les Wib Will Wibley. And Thelma was Victor Hardy's only sister. And bottom left, Katie Bilston in 1926. And Katie had just ridden her horse, Pearl Shop, for the last time before leaving Caston. Right, Les and May Hardy in South Australia at the top. Yeah, and the next one we've got the Hardy family and the Essex car, about 19. 1928. Right. Lowen had just learned to drive and got a licence, so then we were able to have a car. Mum didn't waste any time. Also, that year, she also bought the player piano. Um, and the bottom? And a, a souvenir of a happy motor run to Mount Dandenong. Frank, Will, Lowen, Dick, Annie and Frida. Uh, Frida Hardy. Oh, Frida Hardy, I think, took the photo on the 1st of January 1933. Good. Now, they call Grandpa Will there. Um, 
but he was really James, I thought, Jim. But that Jim was obviously his second name. Oh, yeah. And I think when I was looking for, for some history on him, I didn't know his first name was supposed to be Will, and I was looking for James Hardy in Adelaide, which I didn't get too much information. No, you wouldn't, would you? But from this, I can now write back if I want to and get some more. But Nancy Hardy's class. Grade three at the at school, the Hawksburn Primary School.